Well, hi everyone, welcome back to another episode of Photoshop User TV. We are brought to you by Kelby One, who bring you Photoshop User Magazine. There it is right there, right there. Just in case you can't see the one in the far back back here, here it is right here as well, because the new display system is used, is, is working beautifully. All right, so I am Corey Barker, one of the Photoshop guys here, and I know what you're asking yourself. I have no idea why the new Transformers movie was as bad as it was. I really have no answer there. But you're probably asking yourself this, where, is, where am I right now? This is not the usual set, and you're right, it's not. Our, our, our usual set is actually sitting at the bottom of a 50-foot sinkhole right now. No? No, that's not true. No, actually, uh, the studio is being occupied by another project right now, so we're having to shoot in this lovely room right here, but we're going to still bring you the same great stuff you can always expect. And we've got something special today. We're having a special tutorial from a great Photoshop World instructor and all-around great guy from across the pond. Glenn Dewis is going to be joining us in just a little bit. And of course, Mr. Pete Collins will be on a little bit later and showing some stuff as well. So with that, we're going to dive right in. I've got a quick tip. Before we jump over to Glenn, I want to talk to you about um, some th really interesting 3D stuff um, here inside of Photoshop. Now, I've got some simple text here, and this is just a really quick thing you can do to really make text look interesting, instead of just taking the text and making it 3D. So I'm gonna go ahead and just make this text layer a path layer, or a shape layer, rather. So I'm just gonna right-click on it and choose Create Work Path here. And I'm gonna go ahead and create a new layer and just give it a color fill. Uh, let's give it a color fill that you can actually see the path a little bit better. There we go. So what I wanna do is create other paths to kind of help break this up. It just gives you a better idea of how better you can work with paths and 3D. Now I'm gonna go in and turn off that path for the moment and go and select my rectangular shape tool here. Now up in the options bar, I wanna make sure I'm drawing it as a path and that I'm subtracting from shape here, front shape, right there. And I'm just gonna go into the shape here and just draw a few small little thin lines here. And if I open up my paths panel, you can see that we're drawing inside of that path. So what we're doing here is just creating cuts throughout this um, text here. And I'm just gonna put one more right here and then maybe another one down here. And I'm actually gonna move that one up just a little bit here, there we go. So these little thin lines basically are cutting away from the letters, whereas the, the uh, letters themselves are holding the shape. So I'm gonna select all of them and I'm actually gonna give that a color fill again because I don't want to do it in just boring gray because it's boring. So I give it a color fill and I'm going to go to 3D and do new 3D extrusion from selected path. And it goes ahead and what it does is it the paths that are set to fill will extrude and then these little paths we set to cut away will actually cut away from the object. So it pr pretty much slices right through the 3D object like that as you see right there. Now I'm actually going to rotate my view here. There we go. So now what I want to do is shorten that text just a little bit. That extrusion is a little bit more than I want it to be. So let's just go ahead and take that and bring it down just a little bit. There we go. And I'm just going to go ahead and reset my view to that front facing. So we'll hit default camera there. Now the cool part here is, is that all these elements are separated, yet there's still one 3D unit. So what I want to do is separate it so I can um, maneuver each one as an individual piece. So it's just a matter of going to the 3D menu again, and this time choosing split extrusion. So any 3D objects that aren't touching, that aren't connected in any way, are going to be separated, yet, look, still on the same 3D layer, but now I can go in here and rotate each of these elements individually and even reposition them and then I can get a rather interesting effect. If I didn't want to just rotate them, I could just bring it forward, and I can have this kind of really interesting kind of text effect where I've got multiple levels of objects, and it creates that kind of really cool uh, look about it. And the cool part is, because it's still on a single 3D layer, I can change that view, and you can see where the objects are just kind of like sitting in space, so I can look at it from different angles and just get really creative with the various pieces. So it's not just a matter of being able to split individual letters, but being able to create the shapes like this and then split up the letters themselves and actually really do some interesting effects with it. So just think it's something to think about when you're working with 3D and paths here inside Photoshop. Now, let's go ahead and talk to our friends over in London, or he's near London. He's actually in Ox Oxford, isn't he? 
or near Oxford, is that right, Pete? Pete doesn't know. He doesn't care. <laughs> but I don't know, Corey. Glenn has been great enough to go ahead and record a really fabulous tutorial for us, and we're gonna go ahead and take a look at that now, so let's have a look. Glenn, what have you got? Hi guys, Glenn here over in sunny England. Yes, I did say sun, we're having a bit of a nice spell at the moment. Uh, listen, thanks so much for inviting me onto the show so I can share just a few of the Photoshop techniques that I use on my pictures. So I thought to kick things off, seeing as Corey's a, a big fan of movies, just like myself, I'd go through one of the techniques that I did on a picture that I created a while back now, which is on this fella here, Iron Man. Okay, so the retouching special effect that I want to show you this week is how we can make something look battered and beaten with lots of dents and scratches in it. And I'm going to do it on the pitch you can see on screen now. Now this is my Iron Man picture. It's not finished by a long way. There's a lot more, lot more to do on it. But I'm at the stage now where I'm actually adding in all the battle damage. So if I just turn off the top group here, which is where I've grouped all these little bits where I'm starting to add in all these dents. If I just turn that on and off, you can see now when you look at Iron Man, how he's got all this denting in his chest area, some on his head, a little bit on his shoulders. And it's that that what I want to show you how to do in this particular um, short session. So how do we do that? Well, there's lots of ways you could do it, but a way that I found to do this, which was really quick, was to actually use pictures of cars that have actually got some damage on them already. So I literally found, I went scouring around the net and found a load of pictures similar to this kind of thing here, where we can see we've got a car bumper with a dent in it. And I can actually use that to make it look as if the body armor on Iron Man has got the dent. So here's how I do it. I'm just gonna get my lasso tool, my freehand uh, lasso tool and make a very, very rough selection around this dent here on the back of this car. Then I'm going to go to edit and copy and then go to my Iron Man image and then go to edit paste. Of course, I could also just drag it over into the tabs at the top here to bring it straight into the picture. I'm then going to get my move tool. I'm going to reposition this where I want it. And I want this bit to be kind of like on his chest area around here. So I'll use my move tool, drag it around. Obviously, I can then go to if like free transform if I want to, and I can rotate it something like that. I'm going to lower the opacity on this layer as well, just so I can really check where I'm placing it in. So I'll drag it around, put it maybe somewhere there. In fact, let's just go to free transform again. I'm just going to resize it just a little bit. Don't want it to be too big. Something like that could be good. Yeah, something like that is good. Bring the opacity back up. Now there's lots of ways that I could blend this in. The first one, talking about blending in, will be a blend mode. So I'm going to choose something like overlay and that doesn't do a bad job you know it kind of takes on the effect if I just kind of zoom in just a little bit here it kind of takes on the effect but for me it kind of looks a little bit too saturated and maybe it's too much of a dent in there I don't want it to be quite as strong well here's how we can take it up another level what we can do is use a filter so I'm gonna to go to the top of the screen here go to the filter menu and before I use any filter I'm gonna convert for smart filters because that's then gonna give me the flex ability of coming in later on and making any changes if I feel that I've not done enough or maybe need to apply it just a little bit more. Once I've done that, I'm going to go back to the filter menu and I'll choose other and then high pass. The great thing about using the high pass is if I just drag this radius all the way down to zero, 0.1, I'll put my cursor outside, I'll click on the chest area where that dent is, and we'll just zoom out by clicking on the minus sign just here. So this is our dent. Now, as I start to drag the radius slider over to the right and just increase the radius, you can start to see that some detail now is starting to show through in the preview, but also on the chest area of Iron Man. Now, the more I bring this across to the right-hand side and increase the radius, the more of that dent I can start to show through. So I can control now how dented that chest looks rather than just having to stick with what the original dent looked like, if that makes sense. So we can go to something like there maybe would look pretty good. Then I can click OK. And if I turn that on and off, you can see that it's starting to look pretty good. But I've got obviously excess bits that I don't want. So let's just close that down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a layer mask 
to this dent here. I'm then gonna get a brush and I'm gonna make sure that my foreground color is black because we know that white reveals and black conceals. There are parts of this dent I want to conceal now because I only want it in this chest area. So painting in with a black brush at 100%, I'll just come in and just remove it off some of the areas here and something like that. So now let's just double click on the hand tool now to go to 100% view. Now I'll turn that layer on and off. And you can see now that we've started to add in some dents, really, really realistic. It's kind of blended in. It actually looks like that's the body armor. It's not too contrasty. But the great thing is, because we use this as a smart filter, I could then double click on the high pass here where it says high pass in the layers, and then go back into the filter to again, adjust it how much or how little I want it to show. And you can have a lot of fun doing this. Now, obviously what you could also do is go and find lots more pictures of cars with all different dents in and then place those all over whatever it is that you're trying to make it dented. But what you can also do is just press Command or Control J to duplicate what you've just done, get your Move tool from the top of the toolbar there or pressing V on your keyboard and drag that to wherever you want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little bit of dent in his head. So let's just zoom in on his, uh, his head here. I'll get my uh, free transform. I can rotate it. So we'll go for something like that. In fact, there might be something I've already hidden in that layer mask that I could use. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to the layers panel now over here, and I'm going to right click on the layer mask. And it's going to bring up these options. And one of them says delete layer mask. So now I can see the whole of that dent that we actually have. If I just take it back to normal, you can see there's our original dent. So change it back to overlay. But now that I can then use my move tool to move it around, something like there, then I can add another layer mask, get a black brush, and we'll just take it off areas that I don't want. So I can actually reveal bits by bringing back the whole layer by deleting the layer mask. So something like that, turn that layer on and off, on and off. There we go. So let's just double click on the hand tool now to go back to full view, put these two into a group so you can see now the effect that we're very, very quickly building up. Now, if I just show you again what I've done so far on my own image here, this is actually what I'm going to be working on a little bit more now. Here's some of the battle damage, again, with all the scratches that you can see just around where all the dents are. But there you go. That's just very quickly how you can have a lot of fun adding in dents and battle damage to whatever image it is that you're working on. Probably more suitable for people who are doing compositing. <laughs> Alrighty, thank you very much, Glenn. That was awesome. He, he, of course, hits the right note with us because he knows how much I love movies. He did that especially for me, didn't he? All right, we always love to have Glenn on and hope to have him on once again. And of course, you can see Glenn at Photoshop World coming up in Las Vegas, September 3rd through the 5th. You can go to photoshopworld.com, find out who else is teaching, not just Glenn and myself and Pete, but a whole list of fantastic Photoshop and photography instructors out there. All right, we are going to take a quick break, and when we come back, I'm leaving. I'm not. I'm just going to sit right over there. But Pete's going to be here. He's going to share a few things and go ahead and close out with some giveaways. So you guys stay right here. We'll be right back. MPix Pro, the full-service online photography lab, helping you grow your business with pro-quality photo products and stellar services. Get started at MPixPro.com. <laughs> Well, hey, everybody. Now, I've taken over for Corey. I've kicked him out of the spot. And uh, he threw a little temper tantrum about it. And as a matter of fact, he broke my phone. Can you see that screen? Demeanor right there. Yes, he did. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I just simply asked him for the phone. I was going to show you. As I said on Google+, Facebook, I was going to uh, ask you all what kind of tips you wanted. And if I didn't get any good suggestions, I was going to show you how to take some nude selfies. The problem now is my phone's not working right, thanks to Corey, so no nude selfies for you today. You can blame Corey for that. Or thank you. <laughs> or thank you, depending on the, you know, how things go. Uh, but I did, uh, it's funny, as soon as I put this out, the very first uh, suggestion that came back was from Henny Schmidt. I'm going to say Schmidt, I'm going to just pretend he's German, I don't know if he is or not, but, and he said, how about something about frequency separation? Yep, right over there. There he is right there. Let's see if I hover over him. Yep, there you go. Hey, cute kid. There you go, Henny. Um, hey, I've got one mutual friend with myself. Okay, 
So I decided, all right, let's talk about this because I've had other people jump in and ask about frequency separation. And when you start getting into playing around with uh, skin retouching or whatever, you'll hear this being thrown around. And you'll also have people talk about this as an advanced technique. And we as Photoshop folks love to grab hold of the idea of getting an advanced technique and learning something that the normal folks don't know. Uh, so I started playing around with it, and I'm going to change the name of it because we tend to get frustrated by names. Instead of thinking of it as frequency separation, because that smacks of engineering and all this messing around, to really just name it uh, <laughs> split tuning. I almost forgot what I was going to name it. It's really a way of dealing with skin and blemishes and stuff and retouching that involves a two-step process. And so if we look here, I'm going to start with this image right here. And this is a stock image. I really was tempted to grab somebody I knew and, and work on retouching their face. But then I thought, eh, for the sake of uh, my relationships, let's go with a, a stock image here. And so let me talk to you about what uh, frequency separation is all about, our split tuning. You're going to take and make two copies of the original image, and then you're going to do something to these two layers. And one is going to be the detail layer, and the other one is going to be the tonal layer. So what you're able to do is you're able to work on the skin and its tones on one layer without having to worry about messing up the details on the other layer and vice versa. So it's really kind of simple once you understand that, and there's several ways to do it. And if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts of it, there's some great articles over on F Stoppers you can check out um, because it's, it's, it basically comes down to this. And I want to show you a couple quick things about it, and then you can go play with it because no matter what you do, the main heavy lifting in all this is the artistic way that you're able to deal with those highlights those shadows and also the skin textures and the details and that's still there is no uh, quick way to do that if you really want to do really good skin. Now there are a lot of plugins out there that do a pretty good job but if you want to get into really good detail you need to go in there and be a craftsman with it so there's no quick answer to that. Okay I've babbled enough let's go in here what I'm gonna do I've got these three layers here I'm gonna take and I'm gonna turn off the first layer for a second and I'm gonna come in here and with this layer right here, I'm going to go to Filter, and I'm going to go to Blur, Gaussian Blur. This layer right here is going to be all about the uh, tonality of the skin. And so what I want to do is I want to blur it out to kind of really help smooth some things out and just get the basic tone of the skin. So, uh, yeah, 26.1 sounds like a good number to me. All right, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to name this one Low for low frequency and high frequency. You can name them really whatever you want. The top one I'm going to name high. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the high level back on. And there are a couple ways to do this. One is just by taking and applying a high pass filter to this that kind of cranks up the texture in there. But another one that I like is to come over here and go to image and come down here to apply image. And when you turn that on, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to apply an image and you need to now choose what layer is your source image and I'm going to go down and choose low. Now what will happen is you, you've got it set up like this and you want to change your blending mode to subtract. And now when you do that it gives you some different settings here and the settings that I have stolen from somebody else uh, try about a two on your scale and at 128 as your your offset and this was from f stoppers i stole from f stoppers i, I love f stoppers and so uh this was good if you've got an 8-bit setup if you've got a 16-bit setup uh you could play around with a little different setting but uh, okay and that's what you have right here doesn't look that spectacular but if you come over and change it to linear light now you're basically back to the original image uh, if that makes sense, let's show you right here. If I hide that group of those two and turn it back on, you don't really see a change. Now here's one little added caveat that I like that I read uh, uh, another person does is adds above the low layer here, adds a blank layer and is going to do all the tonal changes on that layer so that then you can uh, blend that and smear that and it's a little softer. 
Okay, that's the easiest thing. As a matter of fact, you could set up an action to run that whenever you want to do it. Boop, 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 and pop it all up and you're ready to roll. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come back and on that new blank layer, I'm going to grab my paint brush and I'm going to go with a fairly soft brush. And let's just see what the spacing is like. I'm going to bring the spacing all the way back down just to make sure it's nice and smooth. I'm going to increase the size to a fairly decent size. And then I'm going to make sure it's a nice soft edge. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for areas of the skin uh, that have a good tonal quality to it that I might want to apply to some different areas. Like this area up here, I'm going to grab right there and just pick that color and I'm going to start painting in that tone. It's a little hot, so what I want to do is drop it down probably about 30%. Let's undo. And now what I can do is I can start just basically painting in some, some skin tones and lightening things up. Uh, if I hit an area like the lips or whatever where I overdo it too much, I can erase it or mask it back out. But one of the areas that's really going to help is make sure you hit in the eye areas there to brighten that up. Come along and just start to smooth out some of the, the tonal qualities of that. Okay, once I get it to where I like it, what I would do is I will come in and add a little Gaussian blur to that as well so that it really smooths out my brush strokes. I won't put that quite that much in there. Okay, and so I quickly am able to go in there and start adjusting the tones. That should make, that should make fairly simple sense. Okay, then the thing is that I want to do is I now want to jump up to the high layer here and I want to start working on the details. And what that will be is things like any blemishes or like this hair working through here. And I tend to, different people say, oh, well, you need to use the patch tool, you need to use the clone stamp tool, healing brush tool, whichever one you prefer. I find people tend to like one, understand how it works a little bit better than the other. I love the spot healing brush, and I use it as much as possible, as much as I can get away with it, because then I can simply just come in here and start hitting these areas. And I'm not worried about so much the... Uh, any of the color shifting or anything like that, I would come in and I'll start working the hair follicles and tracing them around, but I'm doing all the work on the detail side of things. And once I get to a level where I like it, I can now save that as a group, merge those layers, and I've got a great starting point for the next layer where I might want to add makeup and all this other stuff. I could do it again and again. So the whole idea for split, I mean, split tuning or frequency separation is just to put those two different layers on there. One where you're working the tone and one where you're working the detail. And now you start working it and massaging it and eventually you can, you can really get some great details on here. Here is kind of my final look. If I get, um, get in here, let's jump back one uh, to where it's just a blank. So if we go here and we look at there is the before. Now I've added makeup and extra hair and stuff like that. But if we come in and start looking at the skin, I was still able to leave, you know, she had, had a mole and some other stuff here, but I haven't turned her into a porcelain doll. But I've worked and massaged the pores and the, the, the details in there as much as possible because I have more control. And that's why people like this technique. You're able to do the tones and smooth it out in the details and really highlight those. So it's just kind of getting your feet wet with frequency separation, split tuning. Go in there, play around with it, uh, check out those things. Make sure you check out F Stopper's great article on it that you can try out there. And uh, there it is. It, it's not as complex as it, as it seems. It seems like an advanced step, but it really is a, a simple way to do it. All the work really comes down to you getting in there and playing with the skin. So there you go. Uh, I hope that helps, Henny. I hope that other people like that. And. Uh, that's all we got for today as far as tips, but we do have a great peach pit deal. Peach pit. <laughs> and it is 40% off run and gun lighting resources. One light solutions for commercial and portrait photographers by Nick Fancher. And if you will go to peachpit.com slash Kelby1, you'll be able to go in there and make sure you apply the coupon code Kelby1 to get the 40% off. And uh, Hi. oh look, hey, it's Corey. Corey, what? what'd you bring? I bring gifts. Bring gifts. I come bearing gifts. Yes, we have. Did you bring a new phone for me? No, sorry. Jerk. They might have one in IT though. <laughs> they confiscate phones all the time. All right, I do have a special giveaway. Once again, we have Vinny Versace's 
From Oz to Kansas. Beautiful book. Beautiful stuff, beautiful, great stuff. Vinny has got a bunch of great techniques. Vinny also is a Photoshop World instructor. So here's the book right here. You can get a copy of that by going to kelbyone.com slash webcast slash contest. Go to the page and pull down, locate Photoshop User TV, enter your name, and leave us a comment. Something you want to see, something you don't want to see, whatever. But that alone. <laughs> Put your name in the drawing, and you will be able to win. In the hopper, it's really it's just a, it's, a small, it's one of those yeah. bingo. It's the things. digital version of throwing your business card in the fishbowl. Yep. That's all it is. So, there you have it. Is that it? Well, there you go. We're in a different setting today, and it was a little bit different, but a little bit different. Took some adjusting. Yeah. We feel like we're filming like courses in here. This is a room we usually where we'll typically film like uh, courses for Kelby One in yep. here. So. Uh, so we're just doing things a little bit differently today. But we do thank you guys for sticking with us, and we will see you guys next time, of course, on the regular set, hopefully. So thanks, guys. All right. We'll Take see care. you right here. Bye-bye.